So I just did something that no founder is ever supposed to do. I gave up. And it wasn't even one of these glorious fail fast, fail forward learning experiences either. After seven months of hard work and two weeks before we were ready to close funding, we had an amazing team, excited beta users, and almost half a million dollars in funding commitments. But I pulled the plug. My team and most of my investors were furious, but I'm sure I did the right thing. At least, I think I'm sure. You see, the business had what I considered to be an unfixable flaw, and everyone wanted us to take the funding and try to figure out how to make it work before the money ran out. Now, I, I've started a number of startups with a mixture of successes and failures, so I, I totally appreciate that this is how startups are supposed to behave. But I just couldn't do it. Not this time. So I began work on Contract Beast, a SaaS-based contract lifecycle management project, uh, a few Octobers ago. And, and if you've never worked in big IT, you've probably never heard of contract lifecycle management, or CLM, but in brief. CLM handles the authoring, negotiation, execution, and storage of contracts with strict access control. Uh, it also does things like let you know when contracts are about to expire or auto-renew and who's responsible for those deals. So CLM is this highly fractured $7.6 billion global industry with over 80 firms fighting for market share. And Almost all of those companies are clustered up in the enterprise space, where sales cycles are long and top-down, and where revenues are driven by consulting and customization. Well, Contract Beast was going to deliver a SaaS-based, low-cost solution with no consulting required. We're going to start out in the mid-market and then work our way up into the enterprise. Now, our target users responded positively to the mock-ups, and, and many were asking when they could start using it. I was on the right track. Uh, so I spent the next few months working evenings and weekends, developing an MVP, and getting feedback from our users. I left my job that January so I could focus on the startup full time. The rest of the team kept their day jobs, and that was fine. It, it made my final decision a lot easier. We started private beta in early March, and, and things look great. About 65, excuse me, about 35% of our users continue to use the product three or more times a week after registration, and many of them raved about how it was going to save them time and money. The team was excited. Our potential investors were excited. But something was wrong. I mean, it seemed small at first, but, but it bothered me. Despite all this glowing praise, our customers were only using Contract Beast to create a small percentage of their total new contracts. So, so I spent the next two weeks visiting our customers, looking over their shoulders as they worked, and listening to them explain how they planned on using the software. When I asked them directly why they weren't using the product to create more of their contracts, I got a lot of feature requests. Now, talking with, about, talking with customers about features is tricky. I mean, often customers will provide you with useful and solid advice, and, and occasionally a customer will give you an insight that will change your whole way of looking, about, looking at your product. But most of the time, customers don't really want the features they're asking for, at least not very badly. You see, when users are unhappy and they can't express exactly why, they'll often communicate this in a series of trivial, tangential feature requests. So we were getting requests for things like better search functionality and using AI to analyze contracts and integrating alerts with messaging systems. And, and these aren't necessarily bad ideas. but they had nothing to do with why the customers weren't using the product to create the contracts in the first place. 
your, your customers mean well, but implementing these kind of features won't make them any, any happier in the short run. In any event, I, I was overwhelmingly getting these kind of trivial, tangential feature requests. I, I couldn't sleep. My users were telling me that they loved the product and they planned on using it extensively, but they weren't actually using it very much. And I had no idea why. So I was sipping coffee at 5 a.m. on a May morning, rereading 40 pages of user feedback notes, and the fatal flaw jumped out at me. Sure, Contract Beast provided huge gains in efficiency and accuracy, but those gains only came after months of use. The product provided almost no immediate benefit whatsoever. I was fighting human nature and losing. We all say that we're going to eat better and exercise more, but most of us don't. We all know we need to save more money today so we'll be financially secure later, but most of us won't. And all of my customers were telling me that they were going to use this product to achieve these long-term goals, but most of them weren't. Human nature sucks. So there are two solutions to this problem. We could either change our go-to-market strategy, or we could change the product itself. Changing the go-to-market to a top-down, consultative model rather than self-service SaaS was the obvious solution. I mean, individuals may not want to do short-term tasks to achieve long-term goals, but corporate CIOs have no trouble telling their staff to do so. That's a big part of their job. Unfortunately, top-down sales is a lot more expensive than content marketing and SEO, so we would have had to raise prices to a point that would have pushed us out of the mid-market and up into the enterprise space, where we'd be competing with much more established and much better funded firms. And since we lacked any real competitive advantage in that segment, that was a non-starter. So that left us with finding a way to delight our customers in the short term. We started searching for something that would provide that instant gratification. Because unless we found a way to get the customers actively using the product during the trial period, converting them to paying customers would be very difficult. So we re-reviewed all our feature requests, and some of them were excellent, but none of them addressed that problem of providing a real and immediate benefit. So it would have been pointless to implement them. So after weeks of brainstorming, we had nothing. Not a single realistic way of providing that instant gratification that our users Sarabella so desperately craved. And so, with no clear path forward, investors ready to wire funds, and the team ready to quit their jobs, I pulled the plug. Now, maybe we could have made it work before the money ran out, but weeks of brainstorming had not produced a single plausible approach. Now, I am not particularly risk averse, but I think a lot about risk and reward. And as an investor, I probably would have told me to take the money and try to make it work. But the risk-reward equation for investors is very different than it is for founders. As a founder, I was trying to decide whether this venture was worth spending another year of 60-plus hour weeks. So I need a lot more certainty than my investors do. Because my time is far more valuable to me than their money is to them. Investors place bets in a portfolio of companies, but I only have one life. So cutting your losses is easy to understand intellectually, but it's gut-wrenchingly difficult to do in practice. But sometimes, it's best to leave the money on the table. So thank you very much.